Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our show. Tonight, we take a peek into the lives of women in the rabbit. The greatest thing we can do is to receive Torah, but pass it on in some way different than we received it. The calling. Why a rabbi? People thought it was funny for a little girl to want to be a rabbi. They would pat me on the head and say, Isn't that cute? <laughs> I didn't think it was cute. I was serious. My mother said to me, Darling, you should be a rabbi. You have such a big mouth. <laughs> Obstacle. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, may I speak with a rabbi? Yes. <laughs> uh, could you get me the rabbi on the phone? I am the rabbi. You're not the secretary? No. <laughs> uh, the rabbi's a woman? Yes, she is. <laughs> and then they hang up. <laughs> As if I don't count. God. My truth about God is that I am not all that sure what I think about God. <laughs> Sometimes you have to pray as if you have no doubt at all. I feel closest to God whenever I let God in. Being counted. My very first teenage service, and the principal is going around the room counting to see if there's a minion. He goes, one, Burl, Two, Michael. Three, Stephen. Four, Joey. And then, he skips me. And he goes to the next boy. And the next. And the next. And I sat there. And I suddenly realized he was not going to count me. Even in those days, even though in those days girls did not have a bat mitzvah, and even though in those days they separated the girls in Hebrew school so they could learn about how to keep a kosher home while the boys were learning how to read their Torah portion, it had never occurred to me that I wouldn't be counted in a minion. Nobody understood what it meant for little girls other than the little girls to be excluded. I enjoy being a girl, a uh, woman. <laughs> so last Friday night, a woman from the congregation comes up to me and she says, by the way, Rabbi, your drosh was great, but your shoes, they are fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I don't know which comment I like better. <laughs> Motherhood. I'm a Cirque du Soleil performer. With four plates spinning about three I can remember a time three weeks after giving birth to my son. I was in the middle of officiating the service on Yom Kippur morning. I had ten minutes during the service to race back to my office and feed the baby. I was so uptight that the milk just wouldn't flow. I couldn't get in the mood. My husband, who'd been watching the baby while I had been on the bima, tried to help me get things going. He put his lips to my ear and this is what he said. <laughs> and just like water gushing. <laughs> I was in the midst of my infertility, desperately wanting to have a child. I was going to be 38 years old, and I thought, this is ridiculous. What am I going to do? I, 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 I just have to pray harder. I remember I used to stay after morning services ended, and before I would lock up, I would just pray and pray and pray. I would say the prayers over and over again, begging God to help me get pregnant. Just begging and begging. It was April, right before Passover. Everyone had left the chapel. I closed.
close the doors and lock them. I remember opening up the ark. It was just me and God. And I was praying my heart out. Praying and praying and I had this holy moment, this epiphany, this, this amazing moment of And I started crying, and tears were rolling down my face. And I said, I got it. I got it. You answered my prayer. And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever understood until that moment that if you ask for something in prayer, the answer could actually be no. In service of. I want to be someone who helps them walk into mystery, helps them feel that they're part of something transcendent, bigger than themselves. Since 1972, 915 women have been ordained as rabbis in the United States. 30 or more in Europe, and still counting. Reborn again, return again, return again, return to the land of your soul.